this is Junichi Horikawa and this is the fifth episode of Algorithmic Design for VEX. And the topic for today is arrays. So first let me explain what is array. Uh, previously we have uh, looked into the variables which was a container which can contain single item. Compared to that, array is a container that can contain multiple items. Similar to variables, uh, array can contain various types of data types such as integers, float, string, and vectors, and so on. So diagram-wise, you can think like this. A variable is a container that can contain single item, and array is a container which can contain several multiple items <coughs> in one container. Similar to variables, the benefit of using array is that you can reuse the items that it stored inside the array later on in different situations many times as you want. And also, because there are multiple items in array, you can access to specific index uh, inside the array. Like for example, if you want to just pick up the third item or fifth item, or you can interactively delete the item and specific index or you can add a new items uh, later on <clears throat> so that's kind of a benefit uh, why you would like to use arrays and the array starts to get really useful when you use it with together with loops and if conditions and for loops and if conditions i'm going to talk about in uh, other videos later videos in today's video, I'm going to show you the very basic of array, how you can use it inside uh, VEX coding. First of all, let's try to create an empty array. So a container which has a zero items inside. So I am going to start by creating a geometry node inside the object network. Then go inside and I'm going to start by creating a attribute wrangle and change the run over to detail and let's rename this into to declare empty array. Now declaring array is pretty similar to variables. Uh, first you need to define the types of arrays like strings, float, integer and so on then you also have to uh, decide the name of the array the container itself so let's say i want to create an array for float first you type float then create space then you define you decide the name for the array uh, container so let's say i'm going to create a array called array for the float called f array then after this you will you have to close this with square bracket now and close the line with semicolon like this now you have just created a float array which is called as f array same for other types if you want to create array for string type string and then space and set any name you want then close it with square bracket and semicolon and you'll be able to create a empty array for string which can contain string items inside it let's try with vector as well if you want to try create vector array say vector space v array square bracket semicolon and that's it that's how you can create a empty array um, with a specific data types like vector strings and float and this could this is the same for other data types like integers matrix and so on so sometimes you want to create arrays with initial items inside it so let's see how you can do that i'm going to copy this node then rename this into initialize array with values so <clears throat> let's say you want to have initial values for float arrays. To do that, after you have declared the empty array, you type equal, then use the curly bracket. And inside the curly bracket, um, just add 
as much value as uh, you want, which you want to include as initial values like 2.5, 1.6, 9.5, 9.3 and so on and this is it and separate the values by comma like this so right now you have just created a float array with three initialized values three values 2.5 1.6 and 9.3 you can store as much value as you want inside the array uh, by just uh, adding comma to each value after each values you can just add any number of values so let's also do that for a string you do e call then create a curly bracket and let's say you want to have four values a b c and d and this is it for string array you can contain four different arrays inside four different items inside a one container string for the string same for vectors, you type equal. And for vectors, the vector itself can also be uh, declared by a curly bracket. So inside the curly bracket, this is the first curly bracket is for the array. The second cur curly bracket, which is inside the first one, is for the vectors. And for the vectors, you can only type three values. So let's say I have one vectors x y and z is equal to 0 1 and 2 and for the second vector maybe i can say 3 4 and 5. so currently i have two vectors which is uh, shown like this as uh, three values inside a query bracket then uh, those two vectors are inside one array which is called as v array now initializing the array works this way and most of the times but sometimes you want to include variables inside the array for example let's say you already have a variable for float called like fl like 2.5 and you want to have this variable inserted in the first item for the f array instead of the valley 2.5 now this seems like the same things that i'm doing but Unfortunately, this gives you an error. That is because when you use a curly bracket, you cannot use a variable. You can only use a row value like this. So in order to use a variable like this, which which contains the number in it, inside, in order to use it for initializing the array, you have to use other method. And let me show you how you can do that. Let me duplicate this. Now I'm going to delete the from the second node I am going to delete this first line and go to the third node I'm going to rename this to initialize array with variables right okay and let's create three uh, variables first float second I'm going to create a variable for string, so I'm going to call it spell, and let's say a. And let's also create a vector variable called as vval, and create 0, 1, 2, like this. All right, and what I want to do is to replace the first value for each array, 2.5, a, and 0, 1, 2 vector with these variables like this fl sval and vval now this gives you an error because you, as i said you cannot use curly bracket to set an array initialize the array with the curly bracket with the variable <clears throat> so instead you can what you can do is to use a function call a special function for the array called array and in order to use array, you first type array, then create a parenthesis like this. Then close it with the parenthesis instead of the query bracket. And then you can create an array which can contain, which can include variable instead of uh, row numbers. Okay, do the same for other types. 
for the string and for the vector. Then there is no error anymore and you can create an array which can contain variables. But the result is still the same, it's just that you, you are using variables instead of row numbers when you initialize the array. Now just like variables, you can store arrays into a at, as an attribute as well. Uh, let's show up the geometry spreadsheet to check out the attributes. Go to click this plus button, go to new paint type, go to inspector and geometry spreadsheet. And there you can see a list of variables. Let's check the detail attribute right here. And let's try to uh, promote the array to this detail attribute, right? So let's copy this last node and bring up to the right side. And I'm going to name it as array as uh, attribute. To create an attribute for array is pretty similar to variables. What you just need, what you need to do is to say <clears throat> if you want to create a float array attribute for the detail. Uh, if you are inside a detail wrangle, then what you need to do is to say f square bracket at and type a name you want to have as an attribute name. Let's say f vowels. Then say f array. And that's it. This means you have just created a float array attribute called as f vowels and inside a f vowels attribute you have just inserted the f array value which is equivalent to this one this value so you should be able to have one two three flow values and if you go to the detail um, <coughs> attribute geometry spreadsheet you should be able to see three numbers array in a attribute name called f vowels so that's pretty simple. You can just do the same things for strings and v, uh, vectors as well. For the string, you type s square bracket at s vowels equal to s array. For the vectors, you say v square bracket at v vowels uh, equal to v array. And if you check the geometry spreadsheet at the detail attribute, you see that S file has one, two, three, four A, B, C, D values stored in one attribute. And V vols, you have two vectors in one attribute. Now, like we did in first episode, you can also use a set function in order to set the attributes for the arrays as well. <clears throat> Let's copy this and rename this arrays as attribute with function. Remember, remember that uh, last time in episode one, we for the point attributes we used set point attribute to set the attributes for the points. For the detail, we use set detail attribute. So let's try to use that instead of these uh, quick accessing way. So for the float, what we can do is to say set detail attrib. And for the set detail attribute, uh, what we need to type as a parameter is a first a geo handle, which is always yourself. So it's going to be zero most of the time. And the uh, name for the attribute, and then the type of the attribute, or I mean the value for the attribute that you want to set. And finally, the optional um, parameter if you want to set or a pen or so on. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is to say first the parameter is going to be zero. Most of the time it's going to be zero. Just remember that. And the name of the attribute that I want to create is for the float array, I'm going to say f vowels. F vowels. And the value that I want to uh, bring to the attribute is this f array. So copy this. And let's see. 
and go to the geometry spreadsheet and you will see the same um, result as I did on the first node like with this quick access way. Now sometimes this method is useful, I mean flexible, much flexible than the quick way, quick accessing way compared to this one because uh, programmatically you can change this uh, attribute name inside the program like you can add like string array I mean uh, i2a array like this so if you're in the loop and you have like number changing from 0 to 10 and each time you want to use that number for the new attribute name you can do like this and to create a new attribute name on each loop in the quick accessing way you cannot do that so that's the benefit of using set function instead of the quick accessing way okay so let's try to do this for other types for the string Oops. let's name this to s vols for the s array and v vols for v array and see the result and you should be able to see the same result as the first one now next thing I want to show you is how you can pick one of the item from one array using an index so let's say if you want to pick up the third item in the array which is this one and I'm, I would like to show you how you can do that in VEX. Let's first create a primitive geometry like sphere. All right. Then I'm going to connect a point wrangle to it. And I'm going to name the wrangle to axis array item. And inside a point wrangle, I'm going to create a float array called values. And as initial values, I'm going to say I am going to have a full values like 1, minus 2, 3, and minus 4. And what I want to do next is to access one of the item using an index number, then use that value to move this uh, sphere in x direction. So uh, in order to access uh, using one of the item with index, I'm going to create a parameter channel called index using chi like we did in parameter uh, video. So I'm going to create a parameter named as index and promote this by clicking this button. You'll be able to have a parameter going from 0 to 10. And then I'm going to I would like to use this index value in order to access to one of the items inside it. Now when you are accessing items in arrays you have to consider the index numbers and the item order always starts from zero. So the first time items is always zero and the second item is one and two and so on. So <clears throat> if you say if you define if you set zero as an index number then you, what you get is the first item. If you say 2, then what you get is the third item. So that you have to remember. And in order to access the item inside the array, what you need to do is to first type the name of the array, in this case values, and then type square bracket, and inside the square bracket you type the index values, in this case this integer value which is in between 0 to 10 can be controlled with this sliders so by doing it you have just access to the float item inside the float array so if the value is 0 if the index is equal to 0 all you get is this value 1 and and let's try to use this value float value to uh, set as a x coordinate for the sphere. So x coordinate of sphere can be accessed using at p.x and let's replace that with the value that you have just retrieved from the array. 
like this. Now let's try to change the sliders and you see that the, the position of the sphere is changing based on the index numbers. When the value is equal to zero, the center of the sphere is, is equal to one, which is this value. When the index is equal to one, then the center of the sphere is equal to minus two, which is this value and so on. Now, after going over four, currently we only have zero, one, two, three index. So we don't uh, really have a index values more than four. So when, when the index values go over the overall total number of the array, then what you get as a result is zero. The center of the sphere goes back to zero. You can check that going to the geometry spreadsheet, the point. You see currently the x value is equal to zero when the value is four, more than four. When it goes back to three, then you have a value minus four, which is equivalent to this value. So remember that when you use a index value in order to access an item, you always have to define the index value between zero to a total number of array minus one, which is in this case three. So zero, one, two, three, if you have total full number of values inside the array. Next, let's see how you can add new item inside a array. Right, so let's try to create a attribute wrangle again, attribute wrangle, name this uh, runover, set the runover to detail and rename this to add item to array. Okay, and I'm going to create a um, empty array first, named as values for the float, right? And let's promote this array to a attribute named as values. So if you go to the geometry spreadsheet and to the detailed tab, you s currently have a empty array stored as values as an attribute. Now there's two ways to add item inside array. One way is to use a function called push and another way is to use a function called append. Now both functions just do the same thing so you can just remember one of the types. And I'll show you how you can use the push uh, function. So when you want to add like float values into this float array, what you can do, type push first with the parentheses and inside the parentheses, first you type the name of the array where you want to add item to. Then uh, <coughs> use column, comma. Then on the next parameter, type any values that you want to input as a value, uh, add as in a value, flow value. Now after doing this, go back to the geometry spreadsheet and you'll be able to see a new, uh, cre newly created item inside the values array. Let's try to do another one, push values and 1.9. And let's see again. Now you have two items stored inside one array. Now you can also do the same with a variable, like say you have float variable like val equal to 8.4. Then you want to store this variable to a values array you can just do the same values and for the second parameter just type val and this will just do the same thing you have just stored a <coughs> a value which it was inside a variable 8.4 to the array like this now that was how you can add the item to the array but there's also a situation that that sometimes you want to add an item to a array which is already inside the attribute. So say you already have an array called values like this inside a detail attribute and you want to directly add an item to this array instead of uh, bringing back to the code. So how you can do that? 
Now in this case, you use some functions to specifically do that kind of um, stuff. Let me first copy this array uh, node, attribute node, and I'm going to rename this to add item to array in attribute. Okay, then I'm going to just create a initial array like 1.4, 5.3, 6.3 and so on. Let's say we, or I have a three items contained in one array as a float, then set it as a detail attribute like this called as values like this and consider that we I want to add another value inside the values LA array called values after having an attribute so to do that we can use a function called set detail attribute which we have used it before in order to set an attribute into a detail but <clears throat> in this case uh, we can use a array specific option which is the fourth parameter for this uh, function which is right here in default the mode is set as um, double quotation set but by changing it you can append or push the specific item into inside the array as an additional values, additional item. So let's try to do that. First parameter is always zero. Second parameter, I want to access to the detail attribute for the array. And in this case, this is the name of the attribute. So say values. And the value that I want to add, I can just create some random numbers like say 9.6. And the fourth parameter, in fourth parameter, what I'm, going, what I'm going to say is instead of set, which is a default parameter, instead of set, I'm going to say append. By saying append, you can create, you can add this item as an additional value into the attribute which it has been already been created previously. Now let's try, let's check. And like this, you have just add the 9.6 item inside the values array, which is already inside the attribute. So this is also pretty handy to use. Uh, you, I think you want to remember that as well. You use a lot in many cases. Now let's also see how you can then remove the item from the array next, like this. Now mainly there are three ways to remove item from the array. One type is to remove the last item from the array. Another way to remove the item from the array is to specifically uh, define which values to remove. Like if you want to remove the values 2.7, then you can remove the specific values inside the array. The last way to remove the item is to remove the item by index. So say you want to remove the item on the index one, then you can remove this item. If you want to remove the item on index three, then you can remove this item. And that's the three ways how you can remove the item from the array. Now let me show you how you can do that using VEX. First of all, let's create a attribute view wrangle with the run over with detail. And I'm going to rename this to remove last item. And let's create some uh, random float values, float arrays. I'm going to name float values and initialize the array with some random values like 2.4. 6.3, <clears> 2.3, 7.9, right? And, okay, the first uh, 
examples in order to remove the item from the array is to remove the last item which is this one and the function you can use to remove the last item is called pop and that is very easy to use you just type you just input the values as a parameter which is the array and by doing it you can just remove the last item from this values array so let's check this out by promoting this values the new values to as an attribute named as vals and see if we have really removed the last item okay let's click this and go to the geometry spreadsheet to the detail and you can see that there's only three items left and I I we have been successfully remove the last item so if we do the pop second time then you we will be going to remove the last item and the second last item then we are left with two items and let's check that out and here you go so the pop are is going to remove the value from the last and which is pretty handy in a lot of cases next I would like to show you how you can remove the values uh, specific value from the array so let's copy this node I'm going to rename this remove item by value okay and I'm going to remove this pop and instead of pop I'm going to use a another function called as remove value and this is the function to remove specific values from the array and you need to type uh, two parameters inside this function the first parameter is the array itself so this is the value is the array that we want to remove from remove the value from and for the second input we want to say which numbers to remove if we want to remove this 2.3 then say 2.3 exactly as it is shown right here <clears throat> this and as a result you'll be able to remove the specific values from this array using this remove value and here we go now the problem with the remove value is that if we have multiple same items like 2.3 on the last uh, it doesn't remove all of them but it just removes the first um, equivalent item which is equal to this one so if we do remove values in this way we are left with four values we have success successfully removed the third item 2.3 but the last 2.3 has not been deleted so that's the kind of a uh, downside of it if we want to remove all the 2.3 values you have to repeat doing this again and again until you are you don't have any 2.3 values left like this <clears throat> so that's how you can use remove value now the last example I want to show you is to how you can remove item by an index so let's copy this triangle and name this remove item by index okay and let's see how you can write it out now I'm going to remove this remove value function and instead I'm going to use another function called remove index and this is pretty straightforward uh, the first parameter you have to type is as always a array and the second parameter is the index which is an integer uh, in which number of the items you want to remove okay so first I first value is values first parameter is values and the second parameter all going to be which index to remove if we say 2 then this third item will be removed let's check that out and successfully the th third item 2.3 has been removed like this now if you want to remove the third one and the fifth one 
you cannot just say remove index 2 and remove index 4 that is because this doesn't really work in order to delete the third and fifth one by checking the detail wrangle it, you see that the last one is keep left now this is because after you have removed the third one which is this 2.3 then you are left with four items so the index will be updated and the 2. 3, the index for the 2.3 become 3 after you, re, you remove the third one so if you want to remove this one and this one you have to say 2 and 3 you have to consider the updated index after you have removed one array so by doing it you can remove again successfully remove third and fifth so it's a bit confusing it's a bit hard to use in this way if if you have multiple remove index and and multiple lines that'll, that'll be really comp that is going to be really complex so I'll try to uh, avoid that Now that we have done some basic operations for the array, I, I would like to show you some miscellaneous uh, functions for array as an optional. Okay, so first I would like to show you how you can create a duplicate array from uh, another array. So let's create a attribute wrangle first. Set as detail and create a array called values initialize with some some random values like 2.4, 6.3, 2.3, and what I want to do is to create a exactly duplicated array like this <clears throat> now in order to do that what you can do there's two ways to do that. One way is to just say, say you want to have, you want to create a value called values two as an array, flow array, and you want to copy all those values from this initial values array. The easiest way is to just say values two equals to values, and this will just create the copy of this values. And as a result, let's check this out by setting values to to a float attribute for the detail. And let's name this to copy array. And you can see that the exact copy has been created. Now, there's also other way to do this uh, aside using an equal I'm comment this out by using double slush. And the other way to copy is to use a function called set. Like this. The set will also create a copy of arrays. And as a result, you get the same result. Now you might think that using just equal is much simpler, but there is um, benefit using set in some cases. And that is when the parameter inside a set is not an array, but vector or matrix. So by using set, you can convert vector or matrix into a float as well. For example, you have a parameter uh, variable called variable for vector called bval with x, y, and z value like this one four five. And currently, this is a vector, and this is not re really a float. So you cannot do values to equal to vval, even though you you might want it to use this as a float this will give you an error but by using set for this vector you can convert this vector value into a array of float and convert it into an array like this so 
in case you want to convert vector or matrix values into a array float array then this set is useful in some cases uh, there are much cases you like to do that kind of stuff but sometimes it is useful so maybe you want to remember that as well but most of the time you can just do equal when you are copying from float array to another float array okay last of all i'm going to show you how you can get the total number of items how much items are contained inside one array and that is pretty useful when you use like uh, loop functions so that in order to see how many loops how many iterations you want to do for the loops okay so i'm going to copy this copy array node and name this as array lengths okay. and then go back to the node to the code editor i'm going to delete all the values except for the first line and what, what, what I want to get as a value is how many numbers, how many values are inside this array. So currently I have four values. So what I want to get is the value uh, number four from this uh, array. To get that, there is a function called length and we can get the length of the array by using it. So I'm going to first create the attribute, I mean the variable called rln to store the number of items and I'm going to use the function called length and inside the length I can input this parameter I can input this array as a parameter values to get the length or the size of this array and store it inside this variable rln and let's check this number by promoting it to the attribute called len for the detail attribute like this now let's check this out going to the geometry spreadsheet and as a result you, uh, you'll be able to see the total number of arrays as an integer if you add one more values and go back to the geometry spreadsheet you'll be able to see five which is the total num updated total number of array inside the attribute. Now this is it for array. If you have already a basic understanding of variables, I think you'll be able to understand array um, as well. And array is pretty powerful when it comes to use it with for loops and if conditions. So later on we're going to be using this a lot uh, in many cases. So try to remember what we have uh, shown here, what I have shown here. And on the next topic, I'm going to show you the basic of string and string operations. There are many things you can do with string as well. So uh, that's the next topic that I want to talk about uh, for VEX. Okay, thank you very much and hope to see you in next time. And if you like this video please consider subscribing and see you and thank you